On the seas of classical antiquity, the trireme ruled the waves. It was a massive construct for the time and a great feat of ancient engineering. The trireme was a galley and a large class of those. Its name comes from the three rows of oars on either side of the ship. Ancient ships had only two real means of propulsion, either oars or sail. Currents was also an option, but only really made sense following a river to the sea. Indeed, all types of galleys, the trireme included, was made for rowing. It was long and did not lie deep in the water. It could be fitted with a sail, but only had limited maneuverability in the wind. When fitted with a sail, it had a square rig. The steering with sails was done with two large oars. When steering while rowing, it was done by one side lifting the oars out of the water while the other continued rowing. The bow of the trireme was shaped like a ram for ramming enemy ships. The rowers would row full force into the other ship in order to cross its side. The trireme was rowed with between 30 and 50 oars on each level of rowers. The trireme had three levels, while the smaller Phoenician bireme had two levels of rowers. The rowers were not slaves, but free men who could not afford costly hoplite armor and thus served as rowers instead. A trireme had a crew of about 200 men, 170 rowers, 13 sailors, 10 soldiers and some officers. The hoplites would be on the upper deck where they could fight the enemies if the two vessels came side to side. Let us now take a look at the inside of the trireme. The trireme was an advanced piece of engineering. Please note the green markings for reference. Hoplites manned and protected the vessels from attack. They were not the main weapon of the trireme, but were more for defense. They were stationed on the main deck of the trireme where they guarded against boarding. Below we'll find the actual strength and force of the trireme, the rowers. They were what gave the ram the power to sink other vessels by rowing full force into them. The rowers were the attack force of the trireme and the ram was their weapon. The frames were the main support of the trireme's hull and gave it its shape and strength. The frames were made of oak. The internal rigging was there to hold the sail and mast in place when the mast was raised for use in the wind. The trireme had a ballast of stone that kept it stable in the water and gave it weight for ramming. Finally, all the frames were connected to the keel of the trireme that ended in the ram. The keel was made of cypress wood the trireme, like all galleys, had a low keel that did not go deep, making it more maneuverable for rowing. The trireme was such an improvement and so maneuverable and powerful that it would soon be copied by the other cultures in the Mediterranean. It remained the dominant Mediterranean warship into the Hellenistic era. Both Carthage and Rome expanded on the design, making the quadrireme with four rows of oars and the larger still quinquireme with five rows. This was a naval arms race dependent on the number of oarsmen one could fit on the galley. Larger number of rows than three were structurally difficult, however. When the Roman Empire had established dominance, the ship size steadily decreased as the need for large warships went away. 
In the end, this meant that even the trireme disappeared in favor of smaller galleys that were not as demanding of manpower. By the end of antiquity and the Roman era, the knowledge of building triremes had been lost. Galleys with fewer rows of oars continued to be used in the Mediterranean up until early modern age.